Eric is a performance artist and a free spirit. He loves nothing more than entertaining people with his hula hoops and fire twirling. He loves expressing his art form. But while he's all smiles when he's performing, behind that smile is a tragic story. Glad to be able to tell you a little bit about myself and what got me to the condition where I'm at now and what I'm doing about it um, in an attempt to hopefully reach out to some people that may be going through the similar things that I am and maybe give them some guidance of what I'm doing that make it a little easier or at least help. One of the biggest myths about homelessness in our country today is that it's easy not to be. Some people think that if you apply yourself, if you just pull yourself up by the proverbial bootstraps, that you can take care of everything. Eric is proof that you can have the right motivation, the right spirit, even the right education, and still end up on the streets. Eric is a very friendly person that loves to talk and loves to share his story. When Eric was a young man, he thought he was starting out in his life's journey. He was moving in with his boyfriend and he was loving life. He moved out of his father's house, but his dad still needed help. Okay, so my dad had had his, now this is a big number, he had his 33rd heart attack. Um, oh he God. had a defibrillator that would go off and it would cause a, a re-algorithm uh, like in his heart to shock it back. Um, he had a 23rd episode and he was working with uh, Eisenhower and Dr. Steller who's been an awesome, awesome heart doctor for him. And uh, my aunt and uncle had moved in from San Diego. They had no place to go and I had just moved in with my boyfriend at the time at Blythe and it went rocky between the two of us there for the last year that I was there. So I tried to come back and my dad said, unfortunately, we moved your aunt and uncle in because you know, you weren't here, you took your bed and everything. And I asked you if you wanted to have a safe place to stay still, leave your bed at least. And uh, my aunt and uncle came in and they uh, bulldozed me out. So at that point, my dad said, well, you can either do a couple things. You can find a rescue mission or you can go get arrested. Getting arrested was the farthest thing from Eric's mind. So he decided to take his chances on the street. However, the streets were quick to educate Eric on how tough they could be. The city of LA has now recorded 300 murders in 2020, a grim body count not seen in a decade. Well, Carolyn, gangs and homelessness are two of the data points that we've seen associated. This murder in Wilmington on Sunday is one of the half dozen killings in recent days. It's a 30% increase in shooting victims. And when we look at the people that are being shot and those that are losing their life, the people within our, our, our poorest communities. sleeping out. I was sleeping out and, and, and I was attacked. You attacked by other people that were sleeping out? Yep. Okay. Or uh, I think they were locals to the area, residents, and uh, you know, me being the only white boy in Coachella and Indio was a bad mix. So, so they beat you up? Beat me up, took everything, including my clothes that I was wearing. I was literally almost naked. Um, and if it wasn't for Darla and Jack, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have been here today. And Darla and Jack? Darla is the executive director over at the CDRM, and Jack was her uh, men's overflow program coordinator. And these two are the ones who work with you from this point forward? Yeah, I work with Darla specifically. She's, she said, as long as I'm in the Valley, I have a home. And even to this day, no matter what the reason was, she's never turned her back on me. She's always said, you do have a place here. And I've been working with the mission for about 10 years now. Eric took the opportunities awarded to him while working with the Coachella Valley Rescue Mission. They discovered he had a natural flair for cooking. 
and decided they would help him get into culinary school to help him get his life back on track. They let me into the overflow program and then they saw that when they put me in a position of work, how well I adapted and uh, managed it. So they finally, end run let me into their kitchen where I was serving about four or 500 meals a weekend um, to the homeless, to the public. And they saw they're like right there, that's his niche. He's service all, all day, all along. Like he's always been dependable and can always you know, reach out and with compassion to the next person. I wanna see what he does in culinary school. So uh, Matt, Gone, Darla Burkett, Jack Ramirez, Rogelio Caballero, and um, Randy Burke all got together. And they pitched in and sent me out to Springfield, Missouri, where I went to Victory Trade School, which was a Baptist-ran culinary school where you learn education through social enterprise. Social enterprise, it means you're working as you're learning, and it's through direct contact. So person-to-person -person spokesperson um, would say that that would be related to, I'm running the restaurant that I'm learning. So, and that's exactly what we did at the Cook's Kettle. And that was right there on Boonville Street, right down the street from the bar, me and my uh, future husband would go ahead and, and purchase. Mm. Oh, so Yeah, so I was right down the street. I was so right down the street. for 10 years, you're in Springfield, Missouri. Yep. How long are you in this program? I was in there for a solid year, and okay. I got a triple master's with honors. So tell me triple master's. What's the okay. triple? Butchery, garmage, and pastry sciences. Got it. Okay. So I'm a full... So three areas of expertise within the culinary area. Yes. Got it. And then um, within that 10-year period, I got to become part of the National Chefs Association. Um, I got to cater for the Assembly of God headquarters. Life was finally settling down for Eric. He was doing well in school, learning a great trade, he was in love again, and he had a job that could support both him and his partner. However, on a day that should have been amazing, things took an ugly turn. I was fine. I was working at um, Intuit TurboTax at a corporate level for a quality concern. Yeah. So people coaching taxes on the phone, I was listening for that. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember I had just gotten my paycheck. And it was like a $2,000 paycheck. And I'm like, holy crap, I can pay my car off now. Mm -hmm. And uh, my boss let me go home early mm -hmm. because she even she knew how, how hard it was to pay that damn car bill. It was so hard, but I was on time. And uh, I pulled up in front of the house that I was staying at with my partner at the time. And I said, babe, I got my car paid off finally. You know, let's celebrate. And, she, and he said, well, I gotta go handle some business downtown. Give me the keys. I was like, no, I, I want to celebrate. You know, I just got home from work. I just paid everything off and I got a surprise. And he's like, no, I need to go now. You don't understand. My money don't wait for nobody. Mm -hmm. And tried to snatch the keys away from me. And I said, no, stop. And he grabbed me, picked me up and slammed my head straight first into the street and left me for dead. Has this ever happened to you before? No. An unprovoked attack from someone Eric trusted and thought he could build his life with triggered his bipolar mental illness and derailed his positive path. And I got on a semi truck with another friend of mine and we ended up going around and going his truck route until I got here the second time. And I landed in uh, Coachella over at the TA and I told Kevin, I'm like, I gotta go. I just, I gotta get my stuff and I gotta go. And I grabbed my dog, I grabbed my bags and uh, I even tried to grab my Keurig and he was like, I can't believe you're even taking the damn Keurig. <laughs> like, well, you know, you gotta have coffee. But, uh, all right, so that come was, back uh, here, but you came back here still with your, with your, with this guy. Yeah, I came back with my, uh, after the second trip coming through, it was, uh, me and my, uh, fiance. And, uh, we this ended up getting my stuff off these cabinets. Is this the same cracked your head open? Or no, this is, this is the one that put oleander in my cereal. Oh. And the one that has the DV charge on him right now yeah. for me. To go along with everything else in his life. Eric, a romantic, continues to fall for men who turn violent. Unlucky in life and unlucky in love. This was Cameron. And so he wanted to get married and he wanted to start fresh. I had just met his son and 
we were, you know, we had our ups and downs. Um, mainly his downs, and I was up. So I had um, I had a couple thousand dollars on me, and I had some leads, so we could, you know, last for a little while. And I'll never forget it. I landed January 10th, and by June into July, right before my birthday. We were walking over here and I was ready to get us an apartment like that day with cash. And I guess he was coming down off of something I didn't see him use, but I know that attitude very well. And he was very frantic -y and very panicked and very sweaty and horrible. And he started beating the shit out of himself in front of Desert Regional. And uh, when he hit me in the face five times, hit my dog, broke her, broke her tooth, um, I said, enough's enough, get the hell away from me. And I walked away. And the cops came to 7-Eleven over on Vista Chino and arrested me for fleeing the scene. Oh my gosh. I understand. So he so had... Is this, is this your first domestic violence that came out of this? Yeah, this, this, this was so it. That explains and a lot to me. Okay. I had to plead guilty in order to save my life because I was about to get stabbed that day. This pattern of violence against Eric might be more than a pattern. As a small group of locals target those going through hard times, to make a quick buck, or to just have a cheap thrill. Um, I've had a couple people, or a group of organized people, attacking me, stealing from me in my sleep. These people stole my dog, uh, my motorcycle, my and where is this happening? Trust. Here. Uh, like sleeping out. Yes. So I'm literally, there's a term called gang stalking that's occurring, and I've actually seen it firsthand with other people here on the street. There are groups of individuals that are getting around online and they're communicating and cooperating and corresponding and following people that are less fortunate, ripping them off, beating them up, hurting them worse. Recovery has been hard. I was going through domestic violence therapy every Wednesday, and sometimes it was so hard to almost barely make it on time or out of fear of being arrested or paranoia of the cops just coming swooping me up because I'm a TV predator when I was actually a victim. I was alienated, lied on. Um, I had false testimonies written on me and spoken on me, and I was thrown in jail, and I had to plead guilty to get out of jail that day because I was almost stabbed. And I've come to find out that was an arranged hit for no other reason than to see me suffer and hurt, possibly worse. Being homeless in a lot of America means that the authorities don't listen to you. You are to them naturally the one criminally at fault. And with no means to defend himself, Eric felt the full weight of the law. But just like the old saying, when it rains, it pours. Another person that Eric thought he could trust betrayed him. My friend of four years comes through and offers me an unbelievable opportunity to stay with him in his home for free. And that's where my career built. And I trusted this man. And we went a year and a half. And lo and behold, here I am. Um, I'm a victim of identity thefts. Um, I was living in a house where Literally three, four days just moving in, I lost my social, my birth certificate, my ID, everything was fraudulently used and copied, and I had no idea the whole time. All I was doing was playing games on Wi-Fi and posting my uh, videos and ads on Facebook, and lo and behold, I'm four o'clock in the morning, I'm making payments of $70 for coffee. I love coffee, but not that much at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Eric looked into the charges and found that his friend had been ripping him off. When he confronted him, this friend called the police and claimed domestic violence. And since Eric already had a charge against him for domestic violence, the police believed it. And even though Eric claimed he was the victim, Eric was once again on the streets. And the downward spiral just got worse. We have another false TV report and fear and a lot of setbacks locally, like I had my dog stolen of eight years. My support animal, my baby, my child has been taken from me. Um, I don't know by who. My motorcycle was just recently stolen. Um, that was a 94 Honda Shadow, paid for in full, taken care of. I was, now I'm walking again. 
all my hula hoops and stuff were stolen. So now I'm playing with coat hangers and sticks, but I'm still flowing. Despite it all, the pain, the abuse, the theft, Eric keeps on moving. His love of the arts keeps him grounded and his need to perform gives him purpose. Well, as an artist, I've learned you gotta keep going no matter what, you can't stop. And I've had all my tools like for my performances and stuff stolen. So my next goal is to get my fans, to get my hula hoops and everything back up at least some way. And I wanna be a part of the Palm Springs Street Fair. COVID-19 thing, that was my first initial and care goal was to become part of the Palm Springs art collection. I wanted to be a movement and a piece of art that can represent our valley all over the United States. Somebody that is looked at not only for their approachability, but also for their apparatus, their ability to actually take their environment by the hair and control it. And not only that, but make it more entertaining more lively. When he's on camera, Eric says all the right things. But when he's off camera, living on the streets, he is struggling. And he's in trouble. He and I text regularly. Conflict, trouble, seems to follow him wherever he goes. He makes bad choices. The lure of drugs and the dysfunction of mental illness keep him in a constant battle. Eric needs a safe place to lay his head down at night. And he needs a place that also provides professional medical assistance. Please like and share this story so we can begin to garner the attention necessary to shed light on this terrible problem. And also, please be sure to leave some words of encouragement in the comment section below. Let Eric know you're thinking of him. Stay strong, Eric.